Hello, I'm Bradley and welcome to my channel. Today I want to talk to you about something which has affected me and does on a daily basis. And do you know what? Sometimes it has the power to make me have a fantastic day and other days it will just make a day so difficult, but up here. So I'll be very honest. I have a lot of problems with obsessing about things probably I can't control. I am a natural worrier. I'm quite a soft-hearted person um, and I take a lot of things to heart. So if that's you, keep listening and if you worry about a lot. So I am a very active person in our family and there's always lots going on. So I've got incredible parents who are my absolute best friends. I've got three incredible brothers. I've got nieces, nephews. I've got uh, my brother's, um, my sister-in-law, my brother's wife. Um, I've got my twin brother, uh, fiance. Um, so there's a lot of people in the mix, my nieces and nephews, and there's lots of Always in a busy family, there's always lots going on. And of course, on top of that, there's lots of views, there's opinions, and there's things happening all the time. Me, it doesn't seem to stop sort of in my life. I always worry about a lot of things. And I think when somebody worries about a lot of things, they have a busy mind. So, for example, somebody who was, and always will be, um, absolutely a huge part of my life is my dear Nan. Now, I lost her back in May of 21, horrifically. Um, and I struggle with that daily. So a lot of that plays on my mind now. And I have good days and bad days. It never, ever goes away. But I think you build, you almost build a new life around that grief um, and that heartbreak. I would say that when my Nan left me, it she almost took a part of me. Well, she did. So do you know what that stands for? I've got quite a busy mind at nights particularly, and I worry and stress over absolutely everything. I also worry and stress if there's anything going on with my brother's lives and if I can help and support them. I like to be there. I like to be a no. I like to know what's going on. I like to, you could say, I'll be honest, control. I like to control the fact that they're happy well. And if there's anything I can do, I'm there and I'm doing it. Unfortunately, in the mix, I manage quite a, a sort of list of all different health issues. It doesn't define me, certainly doesn't stop me and never ever will. Um, but it can make things difficult and it can make things problematic. So I stress and worry about not where I am in my life. Right now, I'll be honest with you, I'd love to be buying my first property. I'd love to have met the lady of my dreams and had children and all of, that of my own. But I'm not in that part of my life at the moment. My other brothers are. So sometimes that plays my mind a lot, um, and that's quite tricky. I look at um, my mum and dad's life and all what they have and all of what they've built, and I, I have to consistently remind myself that, do you know what, that's through sheer hard work, dedication to each other, and I need to slow down, I need to stop worrying about things. And if it sounds like you, then keep listening. So this first half of the year, um, I'll be quite honest, I've been destroying myself with overthinking, mm. stressing, worrying about things. It's been hell, to be quite honest with you. It's really exacerbated a lot of the health issues which I manage. Um, just to give you a little bit of an insight, I had quite a few surgeries from hernia, uh, what should have been a hernia repair. I had the wrong mesh used. It wrecked my life, to be quite honest with you. I'm left with a very severe, um, prolific, over overactive bladder problem. Um, I've got in the next six months, an operation coming up around that as well. Um, for some reason, possibly around stress, they're thinking I develop some sort of seizure issue, which has been really, really difficult to manage. Um, and I'm having a whole host of all different issues going on in the background as well as sort of managing hearing loss and having tinnitus and one thing or another. So that kind of vicious circle, a lot of things affected by stress, you could say, going on in my life. But can I stop it? No, I can't. And I think... When you can't stop it, what you need to then concentrate on is making it into more of a healthier um, healthier cycle or a healthier kind of venture. So when someone says to you, just don't stress, just switch off, and you think in your own mind, no, 
I care too much about my family, all of my family. It worries me if there's something with my niece. It worries me if there's something with my nephew, my little niece, my twin brother's uh, little girl who was born very, very uh, premature. She's starting school this year. So there's different pieces in the back of my mind. I worry about that. My brother will one thing or another with work and helping them achieve what they want to achieve. If there's any issues, I love that they talk to me about it all the time. Um, my heart breaks all the time that I haven't got my nan to put my arms around and give her a big hug and a kiss and say, do you know what, nan? I never ever want you to leave me. I know that's selfish. Um, so I'm very grateful for the long life she had. Faith is a huge guidance to me and a huge directive in my life. So I'm very grateful for that. But do you know what? Thoughts. Honestly, if you don't get a grip of thoughts, they will soon start to control you and they will hold you back from living your best life yet. And you know, this first six months, I'd say good four maybe to six months, my life has been very, very busy, very, very hectic. Um, you could say, have I made it that way? Absolutely. Because um, I just can't let go of things. Um, but I'm very open and honest about that. And you may think, why am I talking about this on my channel? Well, because if I can help others in a situation which I find myself in so readily, then fantastic. So what am I doing about all of this? So I have been actively really trying to search out ways of how I can control this. Now, my one huge, huge thing which I would always recommend is if you're somebody who obsesses a lot, um, has a very busy mind, possibly with kind of intrusive thoughts, those type of things, a lot of people know what I'm talking about, but you're in control, okay, but yet your mind is busy and loud, lots of things always going on. Perhaps you can't sleep very well at night. Um, because you've got so much going on in your mind. Perhaps it's you you're worried about. Perhaps it's where you are in life you're worried about. Perhaps it's family, loved ones, parents, grandparents, partners, you name it. Could be anything. So the first thing I started doing, which has helped tremendously, is keeping a diary. Keeping a diary day to day. However, be careful because it can be a slippery slope because you can adopt a very obsessive pattern that you log and record everything and that's not what this has got to be it's got to be that if you're worried or stressed about something perhaps jot down what you've done in that day what's engaging those thoughts what's fueling those uh those concerns those anxieties so just jotting things down so number one you're clearing space from your mind you're not having it all up in your mind so everything's so busy so for example for me uh let's take it for example over the weekend um I was very almost hurt how something went in um, something which uh, in my life keeps playing over and playing over. And uh, it stems from I wish that things would have been different a few years ago. So, for example, one thing which always stresses me out, and I can never really come to terms of it, is the fact that how my, na my nan's uh, life had to be towards the latter part of her life. Very, very difficult for such an incredible lady. And she had Alzheimer's. So you can imagine what I seen this incredible person, my whole world was going through. So often in my mind, I get quite down the fact that you different people you see in life and you see different people, these stars, celebrities, and they're getting in advance in years, but yet they're still able to do this. They're still able to enjoy this. So I suppose a little bit of jealousy. OK, so sometimes I get quite down the fact that what my nan had to go through Um but I would never, of course, wish it on anybody else, not for the world, and neither would she. But I just get down and stressed about it. And even now, do you know, I worry about it. And you may think, well, how strange being that she is no longer with us in person. No, but she's with the Lord up above. And I still worry. So, um, do you know, what? sometimes I worry about that. So those type of thoughts I would write down. So they're not in my mind. They're not in my mind. I'm not stressing about them. And it just gives me a clear space. So, for example, if I'm stressing about organising a trip, for example, which has happened, um, or an appointment, I've got some anxieties about a couple of appointments coming up, I write them down. So on a particular bad day, I might write down three or four points. I might write down why it's making me feel the way it is and how I'm feeling. Sometimes I can get so stressed out that it almost makes me feel a bit um, discombobulated, like I struggle sometimes to find the words which I want to, where I'm quite overly almost burnt out with the stress. So I write that down. And you know what? That has given me a practice where I can just kind of clear headspace. And when I shut that diary, it's almost like that I can breathe a sigh of relief. So that's a really, really fantastic tool which I use. It's not a cure, but it's just another tool to help you quieten down your mind with all those busy thoughts going on. 
So another thing is almost having that sense of control in your mind that if you're like me and you've got worries and concerns, it almost like the worst possible scenario comes over your, in your imagination, your mind. Almost a bit like an intrusive thought. Do you know what? It sounds really counterintuitive, but what I have really tried to um, get a grip of is sitting with the worst case scenario. And you may think that why, why on earth would you do that? So if you're worried about the worst case scenario and those thoughts come up in your mind, what I've been really trying to do is almost really try to retrain my mind. So cognitive behavioural therapy. So reading up, all the, uh, reading up on that uh, at practice, I would really recommend. But the one thing I've been really trying to work on is actually sitting with those uncomfortable thoughts. So if you're thinking that actually the worst case scenario is going to happen at work or if you don't get something done or if you don't meet a deadline or you're not going to meet, I don't know, something in your life or perhaps something's going to happen, sit with that worst case scenario. So if it's a thought which comes over your head and it makes you uncomfortable, sit with it. And I came across and I'd love to take um, I'd love to take uh, that this was my thought, but it wasn't. Um, and I came across something on YouTube, actually, and um it was almost like, imagine yourself going into a cold pool, cold pool of water, you're on holidays, freezing cold. You sit with that uncomfortable, that irritability, that real shock to the system. You sit with that, but you get more comfortable, more comfortable, more comfortable to the point you start swimming around and you're more comfortable with it. So in that same breath, think of it like this, that you are not accepting those thoughts, but you're retraining your mind to sit with that uncomfortable sort of situation, that thought you're in. So, for example, if you're thinking, oh, my God, worst case scenario is going to happen or worst case scenario is going to happen with me or I'm not going to get the job I've applied for or I'm not going to be able to do what I need to do at the end of the month because of finances or one through another or a relationship. Oh, my God, I'm, I'm, I'm never going to be in this part of, of my kind of my life. I'm never going to have a child or I'm never going to buy my first house. Sit with an uncomfortable thought. Sit with that intrusive thought. Perhaps you get real horrible thoughts. Just spin it around. Sit with it. Let it make you feel uncomfortable because what you're doing is you're training your mind to think, actually, do you know what? We're here. We're right here. And if you say to yourself, and I actually say, do you know what? Totally. I just use that phrase, totally. Okay, whatever, totally. And I sit with that thought. And yeah, it makes you feel uncomfortable. It makes you feel very uncomfortable sometimes. And then, do you know what? The more times you do it, you almost get your mind frame to sit with uncomfortable thoughts. And in the end, you don't take so much notice of it. So that's been improving and improving. And it's not just a one trick wonder where it's going to, you're going to do it now and it's going to work. It's got to be a constant battle. And I say battle, it shouldn't be. It's got to be a, com a constant sort of in your life. So it's never going to be just one thing. It's almost equipping yourself with the tools to be able to deal with just the day-to-day -day stresses of general life. So that's one thing, what I've been really doing. So I think just bringing on to the next thing, it has to almost be a real change of kind of um, a kind of a, a change of the pattern of what your life is. So, for example, if you can pinpoint when you are really overthinking at times in your life, like for me, when I switch the computer off from work, I sometimes feel really, really quite burnt out, really quite stressed and everything going about my mind and I'm worrying about tomorrow before I'm even there. So what I've started doing is at that time is I've started shutting everything down, putting everything aside and just going out for a short walk when it's possible to do so. And you know what? I then try to just take in just small things. So if I notice some really brightly coloured plants or if I notice that it's, the sky's coming a bit grey, a bit atmospheric, or if I notice somebody's walking down the street, I try to just concentrate and block out that kind of element of mindfulness, you could say, and just block out everything what's going on and I just hold on to what I'm walking through or walking past. So if I'm walking around like the block where I live, I'm taking in sort of just small things like someone's car driving past, someone's, because I'm very interested in hair, so someone's choice of hairstyle, uh, the weather, plant, and it really does just almost set you free of what's going on in your own mind. Now it doesn't always work, but sometimes it does. Now, lastly, the one thing I want to leave you with is a lot of people will know on my channel is I love to sing. A lot of people can sometimes get a bit embarrassed about that. Sometimes I used to. But the essence of it is doing something which you love takes you out of your comfort zone. OK, or if it doesn't take you out of your comfort zone, just allowing yourself time to enjoy something you really, really enjoy and love. And I think when you do that, 
it really does almost just set yourself free and it just gives you some kind of almost relief in your mind so your mind's not so busy. Now you may think why am I doing all of these things? Why am I writing things down? Why am I trying to take notes and sort of control thoughts? Why am I trying to almost acknowledge thoughts and sit with that uncomfortableness? Well because if you don't control your thoughts okay what I've lived these past couple of months, certainly this first half of the year, let's be honest, 2024, your thoughts in a way start to overbearingly control you. They start to cause you so much stress. You're acknowledging absolutely everything going on, but sometimes your mind can make things worse. Your mind can kind of play tricks on you is to think that actually it's making things worse than what it is. Nine times out of 10, the things we're worried about, worst case scenario, they're not that bad. OK, we're making things bigger than what they actually are. We're kind of taking them out of perspective of what they actually are and we're stressing over things. So, for example, the one thing, small thing we're worrying about tomorrow, think of it like this. OK, if that happens tomorrow, what's going to happen? You're still going to wake up. You're still going to live your life. You're still going to have your family. You're still going to go home. You're still going to get paid at the end of the month. You're still going to have your job and you're still going to be doing a great job. So why am I worrying about it? So it was almost kind of training your mind to just have a much more healthier perspective of thoughts. And if you've got a very busy mind, perhaps it's time you took a step back in life. Perhaps you're a bit just generally burnt out with things at the moment. It's OK. And you know, what? it is more of a strength to acknowledge that it's all too much for you to keep going, to keep going, to keep going, and then you fall. And then you've probably got to take a long spell of time out of your work or a long time spell out of your life and go through all of that kind of mountain climb before you're back where you are. So looking after your mental well-being is hugely beneficial. And if you're sat there thinking, do you know what, a lot of what you've spoken about, Bradley, I'm going through right now, I urge you to just relax a little bit and just actually just tone things down. There is another day, my friend, tomorrow. And you know what? When you start to do this, you start to live your best life yet because all of that energy you've been putting into things and all the time you've stressed over things, you've probably ruined your afternoon over things, you've ruined a weekend over things. It's time you could have had back and you could have enjoyed with loved ones. You could be doing things which you enjoy. So honestly, my friend, just those few first steps of controlling a busy, overcrowded, overbearing mind Honestly, listen, work hard at it, because following that, you will live your best life yet. On that note, if you have any questions or queries at all for me, then please leave them down below. Sometimes it takes me a little while to come back to you, but I absolutely will come back to you. And on that note, thank you very much for sharing this clip with me. I really, really hope that it helps and I hope that you can relate. Um, and if you can, let me know. If you can't, let me know. On that note, God bless and thank you very much for being here. Until next time, I look forward to you joining me. Bye for now.